started doing graffiti in 1985. Yeah, I was like 13, 14 years old, and yeah, I had my friends who were like into into hip hop already, and that's how everything started, like like a kid game, you know, like <laughs> child game. Graffiti is not looking for approval or to be in a gallery. I became an artist because my school was graffiti. I came from another world which was studied at the Sorbonne and did figure drawing at the university. But the beautiful part is that with this new movement, we kind of have intersected. They're teaching me how to go big and public and I'm teaching them how to paint on canvas. I think the beautiful part is to see when, when you get hybrids of art and I think that's what this whole movement is. I think it's, it's great to see art and street art evolve, you know. Um, the idea to me of a wall, a stationary wall, um, I think it, it's, it's kind of confined. How do we make something that's enjoyable for people that are on the streets in Wynwood? You know, how do we make something that is mobile? How do we make the walls move? My name is Greg Mike, I'm an artist and designer. We're here in Miami, Heineken Mobile Art Experience. I wanted it something that could pop up anywhere, whether it is in South Beach, or whether it is in the heart of Wynwood, or whether we show up to a studio, or whether you know someone gives us a buzz, we can roll up and deliver paint. That was the idea, it was kind of like taking all the elements and all the needs that I've seen in the past in Miami and all over the world when we've been painting. And it was like, you know, let's, let's create a gallery, let's create an experience, let's show live content of the work being created that day. Let's have the ability to not paint over pieces and keep the canvases and then show them from a gallery point of view and just create something that's, that's fresh and, and refreshing and put a modern twist on the classic box truck. There's two components to the project. You know, you have your live element of it and then to live online. It goes national, it goes global, and then those pieces eventually land in different homes and different collectors and different galleries you know, different museums over the course of the next year. I'm here in uh, Miami for Art Basel, which is one of the biggest gatherings of public art. Artists, muralists, graffiti artists, street artists, whatever you want to call it, whatever label you want to give. This is really special. I mean, Basel, I've been coming here six years now. I, I came down here, I think, eight years ago for the first time and I haven't missed a year. You know, the weekend down here is absolute insanity. Um, you won't be able to walk on these streets. You won't be able to drive. Craziness. Like, it's, it's crazy how, like, such an amount, big an amount of artists are in the city with so much passion, you know, like painting all night long, sleeping for a few minutes or for an hour and then keep painting, you know. It's good to kind of come down here, soak it all in, and then after the new year, kind of zoom out and plan your, plan your upcoming year, and hopefully with a, a refreshed palette, if you will. With this project, we have 12 artists that are on the roster. There's two artists per day, one on each side that's creating a piece. In the morning, we're at the studio, we're stretching canvases, we're priming canvases, uh, two canvases per side that, that match up to an eight foot tall by 14 foot wide piece. They're loaded onto the truck, they head to the location, the artists meet there, and uh, they just start getting busy. And then the truck travels around, goes to the second location. At the end of the night, the truck ends up back at the studio, pieces come off, get unstretched, wrap new canvas by 8 a.m. in the morning, prime them again, and they're ready to go at 10 a.m. Knowing this and having something that's 360 and like artists painting on both sides, I was like, we have to have a drone component. I don't think murals should be shot from the ground. It doesn't give the right perspective. You know, we paint huge, we paint big. We paint publicly, wrap around the buildings, we go in the buildings. It's a, it's a very organic kind of form of art, and um, the drones are the perfect tool to film that. Well, with 3DR, I mean, it was a no-brainer because the speed, we need something that we can just set up, hit the ground running. So having the ability to get those camera angles, like those full 360 pans, you know, I think that really shows what this thing is all about. I thought it would only be right that Montana would manufacture the official Heineken green color. We developed a design that obviously has some reference to Basel, Miami, just the project in general. We're really excited about it. So we did a thousand of these and they're just being gifted to different artists, different press, and people that are excited about the collaboration. A lot of these artists are guys that we've worked with through ABV. We've done a lot of different design and, and build activations with Heineken that they've supported in the past, like the massive 35-foot-tall live art pyramid. 
So a lot of the guys are guys that are true to the brand and are excited about new ideas and new concepts and doing something different and that are working with Montana. They work with a lot of the artists as well. So it was a large collaborative project. I've been doing portraiture probably for the past 10 years or so. You know, every artist is, is trying to figure out a, a style and something, you know, consistencies in their work. And, you know, I, I like really dramatic lighting, like really light lights and dark darks. To me, the harsh lighting is about, you know, information, just gathering, um, you know, the shape of the face. When I was first, starting to paint portraits, I was just focusing so much on capturing everything about the person. I would paint in backgrounds, I would paint in everything, and I think as I develop as an artist, um, it's more about trying to deconstruct it a little and remove unnecessary um, elements. I think to me, if you can communicate a little bit more with painting a little bit less, that's, that's the beauty. It makes it a little bit more interesting than just painting a realistic figure in every way, shape, or form. If I can just create a person just with the eyes alone, I'll, I'll try to do that as well. This is my 24-7, it's my life. My, my, my daughter and my, my paintings are my, my full life, yeah. <laughs> it was just to, to have fun, to go to the street, the adrenaline, you know, like I never thought that I would make a living out of it. And then when I, I painted more and more, I, then I thought that yeah, it would be a dream to live out of painting. When I decided that I was gonna do a living out of it, I didn't have other people around me that did it before, so it was something totally new. I'm from Chile, you know, like if it's hard here, imagine who is in like South America, you know, like, or in the third world. But yeah, it, it was a decision, and I think I, I did, made the best decision of my life. <laughs> I did letters for many years and then I started to do like portraits and photorealism and I used it just like pastel colors. I was living in Santiago and Santiago is a very great city, you know. There is another city in Chile called Valparaíso, which is like an amazing city, it's my favorite place to, to paint because all the houses are different, all the houses have different color. So I started to use all the colors because it was like, you know, you, ha you had to play with the context. Uh, and that's why I started to use like all, like every single color. If I can use 120 colors in a, in a wall, I will use it. You know, like, the colors has this amazing power of attracting people, uh, getting the attention. That's why I, I like to use a lot of colors because first thing, people like the color. Uh, and then they, they, they say, oh, this is beautiful. But then it's like, oh, what is he trying to say here? But so that tension in between the message and the, this like aesthetic um, attraction that the whole colors has, you know, I think is very powerful. And that's why I like to use it. I feel like art like has to be sexy. And it could be, you know, a very subtle piece. I, I think it's your attitude, you know what I mean? And I think it's personality trait, you know? Maybe I guess the way you carry yourself or sort of respect yourself or the things around you. My process is kind of sculptural. I like to add, take away, Kind of like if you were making a sculpture, you add clay, then you remove clay, and so I'm always adding colors and removing it and sculpting with line quality. The pieces that I paint tend to express some of the emotions I'm feeling at the moment, whether it be solemn or peaceful or, you know, a little grumpy. It adds to the end result.
when you're in the middle of Wynwood and there's thousands and thousands of people that are walking by and coming up to you and talking to you and the energy and the music is pumping and there's drones flying around you and all different angles. I mean, it's just like, it's real. And I mean, the energy that you get from that like fuels your creative passion, which is cool, you know, because it's totally different than when you're in the studio. This just adds a whole like different level of excitement and adrenaline and you're on a clock where it's like, you know, you have to finish a piece from like 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. That is motivating within itself and really like fuels the whole creative energy. I feel like there's just such a connection with humans and animals. The personality, there's such a relationship that's created there. More recently, I've gone back to that and just added a lot more personality into the work with some of these characters mixed with like the animal side. I've always had a love for design and bringing things to life that were just an idea or a concept or if I felt like there was a need for something. And I think that's important with art is like creating something that, that is larger than just myself with a, with a can of paint in my hand. I love painting walls, I'm not gonna lie. It's my favorite thing in the world to do. But there's something exciting also as coming up with an idea and, and bringing it to life. So there is something really that I find enjoyable about doing projects like this where, I mean, it starts as just like maybe one little part of an idea and then it just kind, kind of grows and molds and, and, and turns into something larger. You know, originally it was just like the mobile art truck and then, you know, we brought in Montana and Heineken and then, you know, 3DR. And, um, Vantage Point Radio, and it, there's all these additional partners and, and people and the artists that make it just so much larger and, and just makes the project so much fuller. And you know, artists from all over the globe were involved in this project, so we were able to curate a nice mix of different styles, you know, whether from more like the traditional graffiti style all the way to the more like illustrative street art side of everything. So it was good to kind of just bring everyone together and give like a variety of styles and flavors. And I think just universe. My belief is like that um, it helps you out where you're doing something that you love, you're being honest, you are kind of interacting with people through love, and you put hard work on it. I think the universe opens up its doors and then help you out to do whatever you want to do. Man, I mean, I, it's, it's weird. I'm just humbled to be in the position I am. And when I meet people who truly enjoy the work, it's such a great process. You know, each day, the truck has something new. There's new canvases that are slid in, there's new artists, there's, there's new work appearing in different locations. The end result, it's inspiring and it, it makes me want to work harder and I can't wait to see where this project's gonna go. Wherever the truck can travel and we can pull these four wheels on, we can bring art and we can bring a new perspective to the contemporary art world. My idea behind it from the beginning was like, how do we take walls and we put the walls on wheels? How do we bring the art to people in different locations? I think the, the beauty of the project is the unexpected. We really just kind of elevated it to a higher experience and, and that's what it's all about, is really just like pushing the envelope and trying something new. And if you give creative people the right tools, magic happens, you know?